here, Hoss. Got a sick man inside. Hey, Doc! Doc, come on here, quick! Got a fellow sick out here on stagecoach. Doc, about 10 miles back, he got chest pains. I had to run my team full out. Oh, I'm Dr. Martin. I think he's a little bit better now, Doctor. Mr. Wilson, the doctor's here. Thanks, little Joe. Couldn't have stopped him without you. That's all right, Clint. Here, lend me a hand, will you, fellas? Got him all right, Oscar? I got him, Joe. You must be the man who stopped the horses. Yes, ma'am. I'm Joe Cartwright. How do you do? Here, let me give you a hand. Will you show me how to get to the manor house? I'll do one better than that. I'll take you there myself. Got any hey. luggage? Here you go, little Joe. That is it, isn't it? <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> You're kind of young to be traveling around by yourself, aren't you? Nineteen. Oh, come on. I really am. Nobody ever believes me, but I'm 19. How long are you going to be here? Only a few days. And the introductions were cut short. I didn't get your name. I'm Wendy Daniels. And you'd rather not be called Mr. Cartwright? Well, not if I have a choice. You do, Joe. Hey, you know anybody here in Virginia City? Not a person. Until my father arrives. And then I may not know him. But you won't know your own father? I haven't seen him in five years. It's been such a long time. Coming here is the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. Well, it's been a pretty exciting day for me, too. See, I got up this morning, made out a feed list, and I met the prettiest girl in the whole world. Blow out the candle. Don't blow away the cake. Oh, well, I gotta get my wish. <laughs> Joe, you've been uh, with us all evening, and yet you haven't been. You've been off in a fog somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry, Pa. I was just thinking about a girl who came in on the stage this morning. She's so beautiful, I can't even tell you about her. She uh, hit you pretty bad, huh? Yeah, she was a real beauty, Paul. Was she ever? She. She had real light eyes. Kind of like milk glass, just with a little tint of blue. Beautiful blonde hair. Yeah, it was real shiny, like a... like a polished saddle buckle. Glinting in the sunlight. Right, Joe? Ah, oh, shut up and cut the cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks good. <laughs> hey, that's her. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Joe. How nice. I'm uh, with my father and my brother. It's my brother Hoss's birthday. We're having a little celebration. 
Could you join us? All right. For a few moments. Good. Pa? I'd, uh, I'd like to present Miss Wendy Daniels. This is my father and my brother, Haas. John, how are you? Mr. Cartwright, Haas, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Wendy said she could join us for a few moments. Oh, wonderful. That makes this occasion all the more auspicious. Please. Thank you. Uh, Joe told us that you uh, arrived this morning on stage. Yes, by relay from Chicago. Uh -huh. I'll be meeting my father here in a few days. He'll be arriving from Denver. Is he coming here on business? Mm-hmm. He's been visiting several cities during the past couple of months, trying to arrange details for a stage and freight company. Virginia City will be his terminal. He wanted me here with him to celebrate his triumph. Well, the way Virginia City is growing by leaps and bounds, I guess we could stand another stage line. He plans to give Wells Fargo a run for their money. They gave you a pretty good run for yours this morning. It surely was a wild introduction to the West. Have a piece of birthday cake. Thank you. And a little champagne. Martha, can I have a plate and a glass, please? Uh, organizing a, a stage line presents certain difficulties for, for an Easterner, doesn't it? Thank Father you. thinks in large terms. The greater the challenge, the better. <laughs> Here you are, Joe. Talk about a big challenge. Us? <laughs> <laughs> good. There we are. That cake looks awful good. Mm -hmm. Sure does. Sure does. Here you are, Paul. Man, that's, that's family size cake. <laughs> I got a family size brother. <laughs> <laughs> I got a family size appetite. <laughs> there we are. May I propose a toast? To Haas? And to my father? That chair almost suggests he's with us. To Haas Cartwright. May the future be even brighter and more successful than the past. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> A field of four-leaf clovers. Yeah, without bees, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> to my father, who's always filled the cup of my dreams and the special country of my heart. To Taylor Daniels, who can sing you a sonnet, build you a bridge, or, or harness a river just to satisfy your whim of the moment. To my father, I believe I spoke over long. Oh, no, of course not, dear. That was a beautiful toast. We'll drink to your father. I'm sorry. I must leave now. Oh. I'm afraid your western wine is a little bit too much for me. Well. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Western wine. Bottled in France. Western France, I reckon. Wendy? You forgot something. What? You forgot to say you'd go riding with me tomorrow. Riding? Well, I don't know if I should, Joe. Oh, why not? Well, suppose my father should arrive. I wouldn't want to be out of town. Well, you said he wouldn't be here for a couple of days. Well, suppose he should arrive early. Well, I wasn't planning a ride to St. Louis. I'll have you back by the afternoon. All right, look, have it your own way. I'll be by with a stereopticon, and while you're looking at the pictures, I'll wave a fan in your face and do my world-famous impression of horses' hooves. How's that sound? <laughs> now, we really have some beautiful country around here. We've got mountains, trees, lakes. There's only one thing that's missing. What's that? That's you, riding next to me. You certainly don't give up easily, do you? Well, it's that or the stereopticon. <laughs> All right. Be by around noon. Buggy or stereopticon? Use your own judgment.
Hello, Miss Daniels. Good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Well, how are you? Just fine. Well, you enjoying your visit to our part of the country? I know my, my son is enjoying the pleasure of your company. It's been very nice. He's taking me for a ride this afternoon to see the lake. Oh, you'll love it. It's beautiful. Well, Mr. Huber. Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> you have a very special customer here. You know that, don't you? Yes. I'm well aware of that. You make sure that she gets everything she can possibly need. <laughs> well, Miss Daniels, I've checked. But there haven't been any wires or mail on your behalf from Denver. I see. Well, no matter. Father often forgets personal details when he's involved in business. Most men do. I'll contact you the moment anything comes through. Thank you, Mr. Huber. Good day. Good day. Ben, got a minute? Sure, Jim. What can I do for you? Sit down. Um, tell me about Miss Daniels. Miss Daniels? Well, she's a, <laughs> a pretty young lady. <laughs> I don't know very much about her. Well, Joseph introduced her to me, my son. She has an inexcusably neglectful father. He hasn't sent her any money. Oh, really? I don't have to look inside her purse to know that she hasn't got any funds. Hmm. Well, my father's a substantial businessman. He, he's setting up his terminal for the stage line right here in Virginia City. He'll probably be doing business with you. Oh, it slipped his mind. Why did you extend her some credit? My first obligation is to the depositors, I know, but she's a young lady. She needs help. I can't do that, Ben. You can't do that. Hand me one of those checks. What for? I'd like one of those blank checks, if you don't mind. What are you going to Jim, do? Jim, will you please give me one of those blank checks? All right, all right. put three hundred dollars in her account all right but if she uh, finds out where the money came from being an unmarried unattached woman she may feel that she's being put in a compromising light oh Jim compromised <laughs> now see how you've got me involved involved Jim why don't you go fishing it'll restore your sense of human values How long has it been since you've seen your father? Five years he's been away. And I'll see him in two days. I can hardly believe it, Joe. We kept him in Mexico so long. Oh, it was all pretty secret. I didn't know much myself until lately. He was with Benito Juarez. The president of Mexico. Before and after the revolution. My father was a foreigner, but he was one of Juarez's advisors. On his staff. Hmm. He's kind of a kind of a soldier of fortune, huh? I like to think that. He's so many things. But mostly he's well, I guess you could call him an adventurous businessman. He must be adventurous, all right. It's not gonna be any easy job going up against the Wells Fargo. Daddy's company plans to help the small settlements where Wells Fargo doesn't go. Bringing medicine and supplies. And he'll accept barter if he can't pay the fare. He's very idealistic, even in business. Sounds like a fine man. He plans to start small, like a pebble in the water, but from sky high. You could feel his own excitement when he wrote me. Close your eyes, Wendy, and see the clipper ships. 
beautiful, proud, driving fast to the wind. And you'll be at the bow of every one of them. You're kind of spreading yourself a little thin, isn't it? No, silly. He means figureheads carved in the bows of ships. Oh. You're making fun of me. Honestly, Joe, it's kept me awake some. I lie there seeing myself as, as Empress of Asia or Star of India, racing the dolphins on every ocean in the world. <laughs> Wendy, you are an incurable dreamer. Is that wrong, Joe? No, I guess not. It's so... It's so like a fairy tale. Do they ever come true? Oh, sure they do. This ranch, Ponderosa, that was my father's dream. He worked hard and he made it come true. So there's hope for yours. You think so? Really do? Who in the world wouldn't do anything for a girl like you? I'm gonna get you back to the hotel. And all right, who told her that I had deposited the money in her account? She asked directly. I had to give her an honest answer. Had to give her an honest answer. He couldn't have been tactful. Ben, in my business, tact yields to honesty. Sure. Though in this case, I must admit I was sorely tempted. All right, so she wouldn't take any money out of the account. Naturally, I was concerned about her. Young girl like that. Uh, she doesn't see things as they really are. I wanted to help her. Well, it's very commendable. So... I sent a wire off to the manager of the Denver Bank, who happens to be an old school chum of mine. Oh, get to the point, Jim. I merely suggested that he try to approach Miss Daniel's father and sort of nudge him to transfer some of his funds to his daughter. I wish you'd suggested that he nudge Mr. Daniels before this. Well, anyway, I uh, waited at the bank for a return wire. It seems Mr. Daniels closed his account in Denver, a small account, a week ago. He did have a letter of credit on a bank in New York, upon which he had drawn heavily. But, Ben, the worst of it is... is what? My friend in Denver inquired at his hotel. Our Mr. Daniels checked out of the hotel three days ago, left no forwarding address. There's no trace of him. He just disappeared. Huh. I hope you understand, Miss Daniels. Uh, if it was up to me, uh, we have a house rule here that when the bill reaches $50... I understand, Mr. Woods. There's no need to explain. I wish I could let you stay. I really do. Haven't you any friends in Virginia City? I'll pack right away. Now, excuse me, ma'am. Sounds like you need a friend. My name's... Here, here. Now, you don't have to run away. I'm really not hard to get to know. Besides, I might be a great help to you. Please, leave me alone. Now, look, this is a pretty rough town for a young lady to be in, unescorted. Some of these men around here might get the wrong idea about a girl being alone. I'm afraid I... Excuse... Now, look, I'll tell you what. Why don't you... Why don't you find the door, mister? Nobody asked for your advice, Sonny, so beat it, will you? Come on, I'm taking you out of here. Where can I go? You'll stay with us out at the ranch till your father gets here. Go on up and get your things ready.
Hey, come on, don't look so worried. We'll be there pretty soon. Always seems longer the first time. I know. I was just wondering. Yeah, about what? If this is the way Mother felt when she was left alone, you would have liked a little Joe. If she was anything like you are, I would have. She wasn't. She had poise. Nothing ever seemed to bother her. Even when nothing seemed right, she was always alone. Father was off somewhere trying to conquer the world, I suppose. But she didn't seem to mind. She was always there, always devoted to him. Even when she died. Well, you're here now. And there's a difference. I'm here, too. Are you, Joe? Truly? I wonder if anyone ever gets over feeling alone. You just give me a chance to show you. Have to get to work. We got those horses to bring in this morning. You going riding this afternoon? Your father asked me to go to town with him. But if he won't mind. Well, of course I won't. <laughs> hey, Joe, you think we can move all them horses by noon? Sure we can. All I gotta do is stop eating and start working. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I don't know what's come over him, Wendy. Before you got here, I used to have to beat him all the way to the barn to get him to do a day's work. <laughs> You really don't mind hmm? my breaking our date. Oh, come on. Of course not. <laughs> You'll enjoy riding. Thank you. For what? For being the way you are. For letting me be a part of your family. We never had much of a family life. 
Father was away most of the time. He was always off building castles shining in Spain. It was kind of like a dream, not solid and sure like you. Oh, Wendy, you know, there are solid dreams, too. And solid dreamers. And the combination of the two is what makes for change and growth. And uh, it could very well be that your father is one of those solid dreamers. And maybe that's why he hasn't been around the house too much, because he's been so busy away building. Yes. I know. It's, it's just that... Well, knowing you has made me learn what it's like to have a father. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say that. Thank you. Now, you enjoyed this afternoon's ride. I will. Mm. Yeah. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Mother. Over here, if you're searching for an honest man. <laughs> I'm searching for a good beefsteak. That's what I'm searching for. How are you? <laughs> Fine, Ben. Uh, how are you getting on with your house guest? Oh, splendidly. Wendy's a charming young lady. Charming. Uh, have you heard anything about our missing Mr. Daniels? If this is his destination, he'll be here tomorrow. Mm. Oh, Martha. I want you to bring me the best beefsteak you can find at this hotel. You know the way I like it done. And some uh, little potatoes and some peas. Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Ben, does it seem at all strange to you that we are collectively stricken with this sudden interest in a young woman we know nothing about? No. No, not at all. You know why? Because she's vulnerable. Oh, I know, she, uh, she looks uh, at her father through a gossamer veil, but uh, I think that's kind of nice. Yes, that is a nicer sentiment, Ben. But I do have a responsibility to this town. Now, what does that mean? Well, Taylor Daniels has written directly to the merchants. And the word has gotten around that his terminal will be here. That means increased business and jobs. Well, he sure has lit a pretty big fuse. I hope he can carry through with the promised fireworks. So do I. <laughs> so does everybody else, I guess. Oh, now, come on. Aren't you being a little hard on a man that you haven't even met yet? No, no, no. Not me. Others. I am a little cowed by their opinions. They don't exactly jive with uh, Wendy's high regard for her father. Uh-huh. Well, received this AM from New York. Be advised of immediate cancellation. <clears throat> Letter of uh, credit issued Daniel Stage and Freight Company. Advance no further funds, all Western banks being notified. Who's that from? Daniel's backers. He's on his own, Ben, when he gets here. If he gets here. Joe, you might ought to check that stirrup back there. Hmm? I don't reckon I'll ever make a Westerner out of him, Wendy. <laughs> At your service, ma'am. Oh, what a gentleman you are. That's right. <laughs> well, Wendy, have as good a time as possible under the circumstances. <laughs> said anything to me in so long when you finally decide to talk to me again I hope it's something really important 
I'm sorry, Joe. It's just that... Well, look at that. It's so beautiful. And a little bit sad, too. Oh, why sad? Well, my father always said that... Oh, no. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't believe it. I'm Joe Cartwright. You must be Mr. Taylor Daniels. Now, you have to be. That's who I talk to every time you talk to me. Find out what Mr. Daniels is doing, what Mr. Daniels is thinking, what Mr. Daniels is going to be doing in the future. You know, just for once, I'd like to find out something about Wendy. I don't know what to tell you. Tell me anything. Do you like prunes? No. Neither do I. How about plums? <laughs> I love them. Same here, but it doesn't make sense, because a prune is just a plum that's been in the bath too long. Now, prunes and plums aren't much, but they're a start. Now, what else is there about Wendy? Well, there's the Wendy Daniels who, who was the best speller in the first grade. Excellent. Then there's the Wendy Daniels who used to go and collect seashells at the age of 12 to hear the sound of the sea that was locked inside of them. And then there's the Wendy Daniels of right here and right now. And the last one's my favorite. Cartwright. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. I'm Wendy Daniels. Taylor Daniels, the Daniels Stage and Freight Company. Oh, yes, Mr. Daniels. I'm acquainted with your enterprise. My name is Huber. Please come in. Oh, thank you. Have a chair. Now, what can I do for you? I've just arrived from Denver, but I thought I'd check momentarily if you had any correspondence regarding our company. As a matter of fact, yes. A wire from New York. Oh? Your letter of credit, Mr. Daniels. It's been revoked. May I see the wire? Certainly. Yes. Yes, I had it here somewhere. I've told them never to clear this desk. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry, Mr. Daniels. Sorry? For what? For announcing to me that I'm ruined? That my enemies have finally pulled me down into the mud? Daniels. Oh. My daughter is registered here, I believe. Oh, Miss Daniels? Not anymore, she isn't. What do you mean? Well, uh, the young lady was unable to pay her hotel bill. Are you telling me you evicted my daughter? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that she was on the curb. She could have paid her bill with the money that Mr. Cartwright put up. Cartwright? Uh, who is he? Well, he's the fellow who offered her $300 and took her in at the Ponderosa Ranch, where she is now. My daughter is staying at this Ponderosa with Mr. and Mrs. Cartwright? No, not exactly. Uh, there is no Mrs. Cartwright. 
Who else knows my daughter is staying there? Who else? Well, just about everybody in Virginia City, I guess. Oh, please, Mr. Daniels, will you lay off? You're, you're about to choke me. Take a rest. All right, can I help you? I'm looking for a man named Cartwright. Well, I guess I qualify. I'm Joe Cartwright. Cartwright, I've always prided myself on being a civilized human being. There's only one way to treat a person like you. Now, what was that for? For my daughter's reputation. I'm Taylor Daniels. Daniels, you got this whole thing wrong. Have I? I don't think so. Well, look, you're going to listen to me. Joseph. Joseph! What's this all about? This is Wendy's father. I'm afraid he's got a few things mixed up. You better do some explaining. This boy better do some explaining. He abducted my daughter. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My son offered a young lady a decent home. And she accepted it for the sake of her self-respect. My daughter is my responsibility. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear you say that. Why don't you live up to it? Why do you leave her stranded here in Virginia City without even paying her hotel bill? Let me tell you something about your daughter. She's a warm, lovely, courageous girl, and you ought to be proud of her. I can understand perhaps you're wondering about my son's intentions, but he had no need to question hers. Things have been so... I've been so upset... I guess I've been taking it out on everybody. Looks as though I've made a complete fool of myself, doesn't it, Mr. Cartwright? I don't know how I can... Why don't we just forget it? Joe, why don't you tell Wendy your father's here? Right. Mr. Daniels, let's go in the house. Just a minute. father's here. Joe, you're not joking. He's downstairs right now. Oh, Joe, I knew it. I knew he'd come. Do you think I look all right? I think you look beautiful. But what if he doesn't like me? So how could he help but like you? Oh, I'm not like mother. She was always so poised. She always knew just what to say to him. Joe. I'm scared. Look, there's nothing to be scared about. That's your father downstairs. But you don't understand. He's not like other men. Mother always told me that, that he needed someone to stand beside him, to help him from being afraid. When she died, I promised I would try to... Oh, Joe, I'm so happy. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I'm just real happy for you, that's all. Come on. Go on downstairs, your father's waiting. Mr. Cartwright. Mm. Look, I think it's about time that I start calling you Taylor, you start calling me Ben. Well, I could use a friend, Ben. I don't know how I'm going to face Wendy. I... I'm finished. I'm wiped out. I set out to conquer the world. Hmm. Well, you've had uh, some kind of business reverse, and now... and now you feel you're an utter failure. Well, let me tell you something. That's not the picture of Taylor Daniels that I get from your daughter. They always set me on a pedestal. Both Wendy and her mother. 
And somehow I was always falling off. And this time I think for good. My credit has been cut off, you understand? Yes. Yes, I understand. Credit. Letters of introduction. Vouchers. Mortgages. They all seemed very important to me at one time. And then I discovered something of greater importance. Something much more meaningful to me. I discovered how important my sons are to me. You know, Taylor, our children are the only immortality we have. What would a man like me do with a child? I purposely avoided seeing her for years. Even after my wife died, I, I couldn't bear to see Wendy. I never have been a father to her, and it was too late to start. And yet you, you wrote her, asking her to meet you here. Oh, yes, when I thought I was going to succeed. I wrote I could afford to write. With all kinds of reams and reams of glittering promises and nonsense. Seas and sailing ships. <laughs> I'm a rotten failure. Oh, I don't mean to trouble you. I'm sorry. And when Wendy comes down, tell her I'm sorry. It's easy to love a dream, Wendy. It's a lot tougher to love a human being. Your father's here and he needs you. He needs you now more than ever before. You do want to fail, don't you? No man wants to fail, Van, but even a fool knows when he's beaten. And you are beaten. You're so completely beaten that you're ready to run away, just as you have success in your hands. I don't understand. I told you. You told me about credit. I'm talking about your daughter. Taylor, if you walk out this door right now, you will fail. Not only for yourself, but for Wendy. Your whole life will have been a failure. Father? Wendy. <sighs> Wendy, I... I... I don't want to know anything. I don't want to hear anything. I just want you to hold me. We'll be out in a minute. She's saying goodbye to little Joe. Taylor, I know that my friends in San Francisco are looking forward to hearing about your plans for the stage line. Of course, I'm looking forward to seeing the first run. Without you, it would not have been possible. Well, I guess you can say maybe without a daughter's faith in her father, it mightn't have been possible. It's going to be pretty lonely around here without you. You taught me what it was like not to be alone. I'll never forget it. Loneliness is a deep well. Maybe I can help fill it for my father for a while. And then? San Francisco isn't so very far away, is it? No, I guess it's not. Mr. Cartwright. I can never thank you enough. Hey, Wendy, we're going to miss you.
Buen día. Go inside and have some coffee. Huh? Sounds good. 